Hey everyone, we are back with another episode of the Panagraph Prep Preview Football Show. As always, well, not always, you weren't here last week, but Randy, Randy Kindred is back joining me today. Played hooky last week. Yeah, did you enjoy a few days off? I did, but I'm back at it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're into week four already, season's already moving yeah. along, getting closer to the halfway point, and we've got a doozy of a showdown coming up this Friday yeah. night. It's the uh, Unit 5 rivalry and Normal Community and Normal West are both rolling right now. Yeah, I think both uh, both ranked in the top five in the state, and uh, I, I can't imagine that that's, that's been the case before when they've met. I mean, they, they both have had their times being state ranked, but uh, this is about as, as big a rivalry game as you could get. Um, it's going to have big implications in the conference, obviously, and uh, I think it'll be a, a real a shootout type game. Yeah, shootout indeed. I mean, both teams have shown a lot of you know, ability to score the points right now. Uh, Dale and Bodie, a quarterback for Normal, has been incredible. And then Normal West, even without Genesis Force the past couple of weeks, they still just keep running the ball all over the place. Yeah, yeah, they've uh, they've shown that they're they've got multiple weapons, and uh, it sounds like Genesis will probably be back uh, for this game. But, uh, but yeah, with uh, his brother Armani Forrest and uh, and uh, some of the other guys that have stepped up, and uh, they've just they've kind of got that system in place, and uh, they they've really generated a lot of points and. It, it's, like I said, it should be a lot of points both ways. Yeah, a lot of points both ways, but you know, it always seems that sometimes you get these games that look like they're going to be shootouts and it's the defenses that rise to the challenge. Normal West defense has been improved this year and normal community's defense has been good for a while. Yeah, it has. I mean, they, they always seem to, uh, to step up in the, in the big games and uh, I think turnovers will be will play a big part in this game and, uh, and uh, like a lot of coaches talk about, probably special teams, uh, you know, you never know when somebody's going to break a big punt return or something like that to kind of turn the tide. So um, it, it should be a great game, and I'm sure there'll be uh, an overflow crowd in Normal West for this one. Indeed. It was kind of weird to see Normal West actually slip two spots in the Yeah, <laughs> right yeah. I, that was they didn't really drop off. But <laughs> yeah, they, they won 48-7, to seven and they dropped two spots in the state poll. I didn't, don't know how that works. Didn't but quite make sense. Yeah. But in any case, we'll move on to uh, our other inner-city ranked team right now. That's Central Catholic. They're off to a nice start at 3-0, and, and they are at, was it, number 7 in, in 3A still? That's right. And they're going to be at home against Olympia this week. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, the Saints uh, um, will probably have a uh, kind of a breather after uh, it was a tough game last week. They were down 39-30 at St. Joe Ogden, and uh, you know it looked like they were in trouble. Then they scored what the last uh, 29 points, points yeah. of the game and, and won 59 to 39. So, and, and Olympia, they're still trying to build. Uh, it, you know, they've got a pretty nice running back in Matthew Cooksey, but um, it it will be a real challenge for them to to, to keep up with the Saints. I think. You know, you see the Saints, and uh, we just started running our area leaders this week. You see a, a pa good passing game with James Morris as our area's top receiver right now. Yeah, he's a, he's a great story. I think we've talked mentioned him before that uh, hadn't even played football till last year and decided to come out, and he's all-conference last year, and he's just off to a tremendous start this year, uh, both sides of the ball, but especially as a receiver. Um, they kind of wondered who would pick up the slack after Bobby Brady graduated, and Morris has kind of stepped right in there. Indeed. Another one of our area leaders right now on the rushing side is uh, Holden Snyder at Bloomington. He's off to a great start through four games, with, I think about 464 yards or something like that. And the uh, Raiders are going to be home against Kankakee. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, this could possibly be another shootout type game. Uh, Kankakee, uh, the, the last two weeks they've won 35-32 over Bradley Bourbonnet, and then they won 25-20 last week at Ottawa. So uh, in the first week they played uh, Danville at Danville, very close, and Danville state rank. So um, they're a pretty good team coming in here, I think, and, and obviously Bloomington has shown an ability to, to put up a lot of points at 56 last week. So. Yeah, and we mentioned obviously the running game with Snyder, but uh, Colton Sandage of 534 yards and six scores in the passing game, too, at quarterback. Yeah, they complement each other real well, I think, and, uh, and so I, it, it could be one of those games that I, I think it's a good test for uh, Bloomington's defense again to see if they can... Uh, uh, slow down Kankakee. They had a running back go for 120 yards and three touchdowns last week, so they'll kind of have to focus in on him. Talking about another test, uh, things don't get much easier for you, high in the <laughs> Central State Eight, do they? Actually, they fared, they held their own pretty well against yeah. Central Griffin, but now they've got top three in Rochester. Yeah, yeah, this will be, and it's it's at U High, and uh, you know, I guess if you have to play those two teams in the in the schedule, uh, maybe back to back is just get it over with in a way. But uh, I mean, Rochester is just a well-oiled machine. They've got a senior quarterback who's thrown for 
almost 900 yards and 13 touchdowns already with no interceptions. and So that's kind of where it starts for them, I think. Indeed. Just uh, kind of got to get through this. As always, as they knew this new conference was going to be a challenge. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I think they have had some positives to kind of grab onto. They got the win over Decatur Eisenhower in week two, and then, uh, like you said last week, they forty-one to seven at Sacred Heart Griffin. Uh, I think a lot of people thought that would be worse than it was, and they they hung in. And uh, so I give them credit. They're they're kind of stepping up to this challenge, and uh, like you said, they can get through this game relatively healthy. Then. Uh, We'll see, make, see if they can make a run in the second half. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Turk, we're going to look to our area games now. Um, DMAC, obviously reigning state champions. Uh, they're off and rolling. They're, they're outscoring their opponents 147-29. to 29. And this week they're at DPG. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're a little bit different team than, than last year. Last year you knew Jared Reese was kind of the, the guy, and uh, even though they had other talented players, obviously. But this year their rushing attack's kind of been uh, spread out a little bit, but they're still very effective. And... Uh, uh, Levi Sherman is thrown for about 300 yards, I think, and uh, so he kind of keeps the defenses off balance that way. And uh, so it'll be a it'll be a good challenge for EPG. They uh, they'll have to bounce back and and see if they can slow down that offense for one thing, because DMac can just control the ball and you need the clock on you. You mentioned DMac's balance offense. This Tyler Thompson, he's a, their leading rusher right now in balance, but he's also been a pass target for uh, Sherman. It looks like he's kind of a threat. Yeah, and, uh, EPG, I know Ryan Falk is a, a talented guy that leads him in rushing and receiving, and uh, so he'll, I'm sure DMAC will be zeroed in on him to start the game and then kind of go from there. A couple other games to look at also in the HOIC. We've got the uh, field crest is at Eureka, a little bit of a rivalry there, and uh, the Knights are, have uh, Cam Grandy, the area passing leader right now. Yeah, he's off to a tremendous start, and uh, kind of a unique aspect of this game is he spent his first two years at Roanoke Benson, which co-ops with Eureka, so he was in the that program and then moved to then Fieldcrest last year and had a pretty good junior year, and he's just playing tremendous uh, so far this year. So uh, that'll be interesting to see how that see how that goes. Uh, Eureka's played well. Their only loss is a close game at Tri Valley, so mm -hmm. so they're obviously a good team. Yeah, and then uh, one other look at the uh, Illini Prairie now. Uh, Prairie Central and Pontiac, they're both 1-2, and two, and this is their first time they get to square off as uh, Illini Prairie folks. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, going to be another challenge for both teams, uh, trying to stay in the heart of this race with Central Catholic and uh, the newer teams from the league uh, off and running. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure Pontiac will be out to kind of slow down Billy Prince from Prairie Central. He's a quarterback, he's, he's a pretty a, kind of a dual threat, uh, kind of like Cam Grandy is, can run the ball, can pass the ball, so... Uh, and that'll probably be where it starts for the Indians. And yeah, the, their offense has been led a lot by the running game of uh, Liam Melvin so yeah. far. So they're off to, you know, one or two, a couple of losses were tight. So yeah. they've been playing actually pretty well. Yeah, they played Central Catholic very tough uh, uh, at Pontiac. So uh, it, it should be a good game, I think. It always is when those two play each other. Indeed. Well, that's going to do it for another show. Uh, we're going to wrap it up here. And uh, as always, we'll uh, be following the games online and posting the scores as they come in. So follow us on Panagraph.com, and be sure to pick up a Saturday section to uh, read all about the games we get. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.